Hey, it's Don here from the board. Welcome back for another exciting video. Although I don't know what's happened to my camera. Oh, there it goes. Okay, so it was just a bit weird because everything had kind of frozen on my computer. Anyhow, so in a previous video, you would have seen that uh, I had tried to do a CNC switch tester on a bit of 10 mil ply board and this was the result. It wasn't it wasn't fantastic because what I had discovered was that the glue that was used in the chipboard layers of the plywood was actually um, pretty hard and it was causing things to skip and jump and go into funny shapes. Plus uh, it was really just a run to check out the, the collet chuck and of course the drill pro bits that I got. I went away from that and I was like, you know what, I'm not really happy with that. I want to do a little bit more. I want to test out the bits a bit more and I really want to make it functional. And I was rummaging around at my parents' place where I had all my excess stuff left over from renovating our place here when we moved in many, many years ago. And I was like, I swear I had thinner plywood. And I did. I have three mil project ply. So I went and got some of that out of the shed and what I've got now, oops, wrong one, is I've set up the CNC again and this time I've got the three mil project ply taped down and I've got the one and a half mil bit. Now I don't want to put my finger near that because it's already powered, it's electrified and uh, I've already tested that the spindle is on and spins just like just like that so I don't want to go near that because I really like my fingers uh, but I want to show you what I am planning on putting together which is a switch tester again it's just a one-year switch tester but I really want to be able to give this a good run so what I've done in easel is I've put together two sets so because it's three mil four layers of this will give me 12 mil plus a base piece so I was like well you know it's an odd shape if I just cut out the five pieces so I doubled it up and that is essentially what the movement should be on that three mil project ply and of course I've exported the actual uh, movements that are required and what I ended up with in Gerbil is this. So this is the actual pathway. So I've already set the zero. I've raised the uh, actual end mill up now so I could spin it without it being an issue and that's the path that it's going to try and take and, and make those cuts. I've gone and said no tabs this time and cut four and a half mil deep so it should make it all the way through. I've also slowed down the feed rate to half of what was recommended previously because I wasn't sure if it was a good feed rate for such a small bit. And I've also changed the step size to 0.5 of a mil down each step as opposed to 0.7. Once again, to reduce the amount of stress on the actual bit. The thing that that affects is essentially it's going to increase the time it takes to mill this pattern. But you know what? That's okay. I don't have a problem with that. So. I'm going to end this bit now. Uh, we will, of course, switch over to the CNC and I'll start the time lapse. The estimation from Easel is it's going to take about half an hour to do this. I'm going to sit here with some earmuffs on uh, because it's quite noisy. And hopefully, in half an hour, we will have something working and not a broken end mill and possibly a shard of metal that's gone into me or somewhere else in my furniture. So, I'll catch you very shortly, hopefully with a completed set of switch testers.
Wow. So, um, that was 40 minutes and I didn't end up with what I wanted because some kind of other complication has occurred. Um, so I just want to show you what has been the resultant of all of that, which is this. So you can see it's actually managed to cut through where it should have been in the middle part. But when it started doing the outer edges, two things kind of, well, all right, let's just rewind a little bit. Um, and so the first thing was when I first set it up, I had this taped to the base, which was this piece so that I wouldn't crash it into the bed because I was milling it all the way through. And that was fine, but this piece was warped without me really realizing it. It has a slight bend to it, and so it wasn't cutting the right depth. So then that's why you saw me readjust it to actually be clamping down on this piece instead of the base piece and relying on the tape only. And I thought that would fix it, and it kind of did because all these center cuts have pretty much made their way through. So that's fine. But when it went to the outer edges, it wasn't going all the way through. Uh, you know, even if I hold it up to the light, I can't see through it. So it's nowhere close to it. And it was progressively getting worse. It was progressively getting worse to the point where it wasn't even making contact, like at all. Um, there was a little bit up here, but I can't put that just to the warp of the ply because it was several millimeters higher than it should have been. So I'm suspecting that either the spindle is slightly moving up or the actual drive bit here on the stepper motor. If I, I'll just show you because it's still connected. Maybe, hopefully. Um, yeah, okay. So as I spin it, uh, I'm going to rack it up quite a bit. See how it jerks? The actual turning of that stepper motor is not giving 100% of its turn and power to that drive screw. So when it says move it this much or move it up or down, it's actually not delivering the correct amount of movement. Now, I don't know um, if there's an easy solution to that, but it's certainly not something that I can fix right now because I would have to strip that whole thing apart. I had a very similar issue with that previously on one of the other axes, and I put a little bit of glue on that to help increase the amount of grip because the drive motor going into that blue connection piece is only relying on two grub screws to actually turn it. And if it's slipping against the grub screws, then that's partially why it might be happening. The other thing is the amount of tension that I've got on this band to hold the motor in place might be creating too much pressure against the rails, which might be making it hard for the actual stepper motor to drive it up and down. I don't know. So there's a lot of issues with that. But I feel like that's just a little bit of the, the cheapness of the design coming into place here. But as far as looking at the bit and the technical what it's meant to do it's it's doing it fine you know we can we can see it's it's done that now the accuracy of the cut and the actual bit so let's just punch out some of these let's peel the tape off the back of this okay so So you can see that uh, that one didn't make it all the way through, but it's pretty close because you can actually see the light through there. And that one made two edges and two not so clean edges. That one's just, just barely made it through. That one's just starting to make it through, but um, it didn't make it all the way through. So that one, you know, it's thin enough that I could just pop that out. So. The bit's doing its job just fine, and if I get 
a switch. Oosh. Okay, so the accuracy of that cut for 14 mil on the inside is not there. Uh, try it from this way. Oh, there we go. So it does go in. I think it's just because the warp kind of got a little bit. So, so that fits okay. Focus isn't very good right now. But uh, that switch snaps in there okay. We have a look on the underside. It's a little bit, it's a little bit tight because that top part you can see it's got a bit of flexing there but you know what I would be kind of happy with that for all that it is if I try it in a different hole yep so that one went right in really clean I think it's really just needing to clean up some of the edges from that um, so this one and a half mil bit uh, is a little bit under one and a half so that's probably why these are a little bit on the tight side but if I stepped up to the next size, it might have been a bit loose. Well, that one went in pretty well. That one went in just fine. So it is, a, it is a little disappointing that I can't get what I'm wanting out of this straight away. Uh, it is fun to play with and learn and troubleshoot. So there's obviously still issues that have to be dealt with here. But at the end of the day, the bit and the collet and the chuck is doing its job. The stepper motors are doing their best to do their job. It's just probably the fact that I cracked that and I've got this sort of fix it solution as well as that blue connector piece. That blue connector piece is not very good. Now, when I mentioned the other axis, this is the X axis with my, uh, my 3D print solution and you'll see I've actually got hot glue on that to assist drive that. Now that's very tight to get in there, so I don't know if I can do that without actually pulling that entire assembly apart. If I have to do it, I have to do it, but obviously I'm not gonna be able to do that right now. All right, well, I think that's long enough. Um, I'm, I'm a bit sad, but you know what? This is still a work in progress, and for what it is, it's a great learning experience. So thanks very much for checking out the video. I'm sorry I couldn't put together something a little bit more uh, complete for you today. But if you like this kind of stuff, please hit that like button. If you want other people to know about the risks and potential issues in playing with one of these 3018 CNC kits, then please share this video. And if you somehow come across this channel and this video and you're not subscribed to us and you like mechanical keyboards and DIY kind of stuff, then I would love and appreciate, of course, your subscription as well. Don't forget to hit that bell button so that you get notifications of all our new videos whenever they happen. Rightio, that's it. Enough of me. And uh, yeah, of course, as usual, until next time, happy clacking.